Lovely. Flower of the East. Yeah, East Manchester. Far enough to travel to be gawped at by Fred Elliott. And what if he likes the other women more than me? He wouldn't. Are you sure? Two of them are dead. One look at him and I might wish I was. <laughs> oh. I logged on and there were already ten replies. Four of them sent photographs. I printed them up. Hi, Fred. Hello, Claire. Um, well, we'll continue this discussion uh, after my run. <laughs> you, you know Dennis, don't you, from the golf club? Hello. He seems just, just bringing me some instructions on... Exercise bikes. Exercise bikes. Oh, right. He's actually in. He's taken our Joshua for a walk. He'll be a long time, so there's no point in waiting. Oh, right. Try the cut. Oh, the red wreck. Oh, will do. See you. Bye. Bye. She's a lovely lass, but she takes an interest. Understood. Now, I have to say that May lies a bit... Old. Nan! Now, she's a lovely girl, but she's... Older. Now, this girl is... Adduck Lil! Well, she's the dead spit of her. She used to sell fish off the back of a van in Tile Street. You might prefer Orchid. Well, maybe not. Uh, she's beautiful. Well, I suppose she's all right. Divine. And she sent a photo to me. She's looking for a warm-hearted, generous man... I'm warm-hearted and generous. ...with rugged good looks. Won't she go halfway on that? So you like her, dear? You're gonna have to go and see her. She lives in Bangkok. I can't swan off and leave everything. I've got the pub as well as the shop. Well, you go on holiday, don't you? <sighs> Life would be one long holiday with her on my arm. I know what I'm like. I say, I know what I'm like. I might never come back. Well, invite her here. Would she come? She sent her photograph. She wants to meet you. Would she think me worth the air for? Pay it yourself. What, give money to a woman I've never met? Well, if you're not going to go there and she can't come here, you never will meet. I suppose. And all you'll ever have to feast your eyes upon is that, a computer printout. She's a goddess. A thousand pounds for a return ticket and she'll be standing right in front of you. Where should I get a return ticket? To show your intentions are honourable. See? Otherwise, if you turn her down, she'll be alone in a strange land. God knows what she'd have to do. She couldn't work, not legally. You know what that means? I do. Look, I'll sort it out with the agency. I could transfer the money for you. How long will that take? Oh, faster than you ever thought possible. How's that? They call the World Wide Web an information highway, Fred, but it's more than that. It's a financial transportation system. It'll move money around the globe in seconds. Really? Oh, yes. You give me a check and you'll see for yourself. I could be back tomorrow to tell you when she's coming. Tomorrow? Are you sure? It's not impossible. You know? She must have been sitting in front of her computer at exactly the same time as I was sitting in front of mine. Was she? I pressed the send button and two minutes later her answer popped up in my mailbox. Your mailbox? That's what you call technology. I say. Anyway, she'll be here tomorrow. What? Not sure of the time, but it'll be evening. She's coming tomorrow? You've made quite an impression there, Fred. Why should the girl wait? Because I've not shed so much as a pound. Talk about burning calories. I've not even put a light under them yet. There we are. Hey, you look as if you've seen a ghost. You'll soon be seeing a vision. Don't tell me Tyler I'm Tilly's on the way. I'll ring in the morning. Should have everything sorted by then. You're going to get your heart broken again. Now you know that, don't you? You're wrong there. On my word of honour. She's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Uh, proof positive. I mean, what more do you want? <laughs> She's a goddess, Betty. Yes, and you're a mere mortal, love. And you know what'll happen?
What's up, Mr. Joggy? I can have a decent bit of breakfast, can't I? You didn't see the tracksuits and trainers anyway. So have you decided this fitness drives at its end then? What I have decided is that I can't undo a lifetime of indulgence. So I'm not going to try anymore, all right? What do you mean? I mean, it's too late for all that, Ashley. Dad, is this something I should know about? Such as? It's something to do with your health, isn't it? Oh, how to do with me health? Well, have you had some bad news from your doctor, then? No, I've not seen my doctor in years. I'm as fit as a butcher's dog. Well, what is it, then? <sighs> Note! Well, I don't believe you. You've been acting funny for a bit now. It's not what you think it is. So what is it, then, exactly? Ashley, see, when you get older, you get a bit desperate. You look in the mirror and you want to push time back. You want to get shut of some wrinkles and shed a few pounds you've put on over the years. But at the risk of repeating myself, you can't, not overnight. People will have to accept me as I am or not at all. Oh, Dad, you don't have to change. People love you just the way you are. Just like a big, cuddly teddy bear. Thank you, Ashley. That's just what I didn't need to hear. I'd like to know what's going on, Harbutt. Ashley! It's middle of the afternoon. What are you doing here? You should be looking after the shop. Never mind about me. What are you doing dressed at nines on a Monday afternoon? I have an important appointment to keep. Don't ask me what it is. I've no time to stand talking. You're ill, aren't you? I'm not. I keep telling you I'm not. You're going to see a consultant, aren't you? I'm doing out of sort. I'll explain when I get back. And when will that be? I don't know. Depends on circumstances. Now, you're not to worry, all right? He's lying. I know he is. He's going to go to hospital and I'll tell you something. There's something really serious going on here. Oh, Tar. Uh... <laughs> I've been told to stop here. I don't know what time the plane's arriving, so you find yourself somewhere to park up. I don't need an escort, and you don't need a parking fine. So you're meeting them, Fred? Someone interested? Just a friend. There he is. The last of the great lovers. What? In with the flowers? The very same. Gordon Bennett. So is not Brad Pitt. But that belly costs real money, I can tell you. And what if he sees us? Why would he? He's expecting you to walk through that door. He's got his eyes glued on. Well, let's hope it works, Dennis. A lot of soft soap and some timid little smiles. You'll be eating out your hand before you clear the car park. You reckon? The odd misplaced contact might not go amiss, either. As long as it's obviously accidental. I have done this before, you know. Yes, I know, I know. But listen, because this is important, you go in there, mingle with the crowd so he can't spot you, and when you see the people from the Bangkok flight start coming through, get in among them. Right. Tire. Orchid, please. Fred, then. Fred Elliot. Um, overwhelmed, Miss Orchid. Completely overwhelmed. <laughs> Comforting, Mr. Elliot. Oh, now don't forget, Fred. Please. Uh, is this your first time in England? Oh yes. I have never been from Thailand even. Oh. Well, you'll find it a bit strange then. I say it's not like home. <laughs> Still, folk are folk. Doesn't matter how far you travel. That is what people say. Well, now, Chief. Coronation Street, you daft. <laughs> 
Well, you'll find things a bit quaint over here for, for starters. We drive on left side of the road. Here we are. Coronation Street. Now, them old houses on the left here, them was what we call period houses. They may not look much from the outside, but inside some of them are little palaces. I say little palaces. And this building here, this hotel, this is one of my business enterprises. And them houses over yon, they're modern houses where I live. Beautiful. Well, we think so. Uh, uh. Oh, Patrick, will you take the young lady's luggage into the Rovers? Hi, Chief. Now, if you would like to take my arm, I will escort you to my residence. Way up. I thought Shelley was going out tonight. She sat in the living room with that Sunita. She's been let down, Betty. Oh. Trying to stop stir her up. Oh, I thought she looked upset. Oh. Hey, you're not going to believe this. Fred Elliot's got himself a new girlfriend. No, the only one. Well, I say this for him, he keeps trying. Yeah, but wait till you see her. She's a right cracker and about half his age. There's no fool like an old fool. I hoped he'd see sense. <sighs> Ten more minutes, Josh, and then it's bedtime. Come on in, love. Yeah. And welcome. Ah, oh, splendid. Uh, this is my son, Ashley, and his uh, lady friend, Claire. And that little monkey there, that's Joshua, his lad. Can I introduce Miss Orchid Pattaya all the way from Thailand? Hello. Ashley. Oh, I, uh, um... I'll do. What? I'm sure you'll sample lots of our northern hospitality. Out you wish, you've only asked for. I am wishing to visit the small young lady personal room. I beg pardon? Oh, the lavatory. Oh, yes, upstairs. Turn to the left. You can't go wrong. I'll show you the way. I'll take the little one to bed. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Night, night, Joshua. Night, night. Sleep tight, watch the bugs don't bite. Oh, bless him. Get in there, you. What? Get in there. What? What the hell do you think you're doing? We thought you were dying. Dying? What do you mean, dying? All that stuff you were coming out with about you not having long left in your life. Well, it's right. You have to enjoy yourself while you've still got a chance. I mean, let's face it, when the Grim Reaper swings his scythe, it's no use ducking. So, with what bit of life I've got left, I want to make the most of it. What exactly do you want to do with this woman? Miss Pattaya, if you don't mind. Well, first, I intend to get to know her. The way you get to know women, you'll be asking her to marry her by half past nine. Don't talk so soft. I've learned my lesson, I have. I know I've always let my feelings run away with me. But no, no, I... What I'm looking for is, is friendship. At time being. Oh, it's what we call a public house. Unpretentious, granted, but a little gold mine. Whoa, flaming out. Good heavens. He needs locking up. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure. I bet it does. <laughs> to introduce Miss Orchid Pattaya all the way from sunny Thailand. I'm right in saying it's sunny, aren't I? Oh, yes, it's much sunshine. Right, I like Karen, I put a bottle of champagne in the fridge. Would you do the honours, a couple of glasses? Right away, boss. Now, come and sit down, my dear. Now, you mustn't let these folks startle you. They're rough and ready, especially the women, but they're good-hearted. Is he calling me rough and ready? Well, what does he know? He said you were kind-hearted and all. <laughs> I'll just uh, go and get us a champagne, excuse me. Are you sure you can cope with that at your age, Fred? You must be fitter than you look. Sure you know what you're doing? They work for Dennis Storks. And while I think of it, keep your hands off. Uh, I'm Kirk, and he's Tyrone. We could tell you wasn't from round here as soon as we saw you. I hope you two aren't being pests. No, 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 we're just saying hello to our kid. Pardon? Our kid? You said that was a name. Our kid? Orchid, you daft beggar. The name of a rare and precious blossom. Very appropriate.
Here's looking at you, Orchid. Here's a looking at you, Fred. Good health and all you wish yourself. Hey, hey, you know what? For a minute then, you sounded dead lankish, you? Uh, my teacher from the school, he mentions the gentleman. Oh, well, 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 that'll be why then. My accent is wrong. Is it as like? Your accent is belting. Nice looking. Ain't you pathetic at his age? No more pathetic than my love life, Betty. Why don't you take the rest of the night off, love? We can manage, honestly, can't we, Kieran? Absolutely. No problem. No, I'd rather be out here than brooding on my own. I'm talking as your friend now, Fred. You might be, but he isn't. Because I found out when I were caught in Penny. Look, believe it or not, I'm trying to help you. Uh, the trouble is you're on the rebound from Penny. Time, yeah, well, you knew you're impulsive. You could easily get hurt. See? I get all this from our Ashley. Excuse me. As soon as I clapped eyes on you, I thought to myself, flaming Nora. Fred's got himself a right Bobby Dazzler. My English, I am not understanding some of these words. Well, the more you talk to us, babes, the better you'll get. Oh, yeah, yeah. Soon you'll be talking as good as what we do. Thank you, lads. I'm sure that Orchid must be feeling a bit tired now. Let's go through to the back and have a bite to eat, eh? See ya. Let it off. Bye. Two hot pots when you're ready. <clears throat> I'll give him two hot pots. He needs his legs slapping. This will be a bit different to what you're used to. It's what we call hot pot. It is very tasty. This is a plain, simple cookies, Betty. Now fancy, that's all, Betty. Well, I don't get many complaints. <laughs> no, no, you're a treasure, Betty, me oh. old stocking. A pearl among women. Right, anything else you want, you know where the kitchen is. It's not easy to employ staff these days. They take offence on the slightest thing. If you don't want your hot pot, leave it. I'll find you somewhere else. Oh, no, hot pot is good. I will cook for you. Tell me what you like. No, no. You're here to enjoy yourself. I'm not having you slaving over an hot stove. No, from tomorrow night, we shall dine out. You are so generous. Uh, may I ask him, your staff, people working for you, how many? Well, there's four here, the bar staff, plus a cleaner part-time. Then there's the butcher shop. Our Ashley, they don't, don't count him as staff. But there's another chap, Boris. And there's Claire, the nanny. She's on payroll. Oh, it's a burden being an employer. Oh, yes. Well, I suppose it's a prize I have to pay for being successful in business. I think you're a very clever man. Oh, clever? Oh. Well, I suppose I must be, really. I've, I've got on in life. I then ask myself, you know, what's all the struggle been for? What use? It's prosperity when you've got nobody to enjoy it with. This is a wise man speaking. Oh, I don't know about wise I don't know about that. I'm the sort of man who... who needs to sh share whatever he has with someone. Aunt says I know much about Thailand. We used to call it Siam when I were a lad. Oh, have you seen the film, King and I? About this, uh, this King of Siam and the English teacher lady? Yes, I have seen this movie. Well, happen I'll put you in mind of someone, then. You must play the king. Your brunner, you were called. No? Oh, me and Yol, we have the same haircut. Fred, it has been a most long day for me. I am tired now. Oh, of course you want to go to bed. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just getting my handbag. No, uh, I'm just sorting out the arrangements for Orchid, Shelley. Now, there's a room ready for you upstairs, because Shelley and her mother live here. And if there's out else you want, I'm only at road. Oh, but Fred, you are owner of this house. I certainly am. In my country, a nice girl must not sleep in house belonging to men, friend. It is not a proper thing. Oh, you hear that, Shelley? A bit different than the lot around here, isn't it, eh? Them trollops don't even ask a fella's name. 
It is arranged I am to stay with a lady who is niece of my cousin's father. She lives here in the East. How do you mean, the East? East Dysbury? She means East Didsbury. Oh, well, that's fine. We'll get a taxi. We'll see you home safe and sound. You are so kind, Fred. So thoughtful. I want thanking you for your so kind welcome. Believe me, Orchid Love, it's my pleasure. So I'll call for you tomorrow morning, eh? Not a morning, please. To reason. I am very weary and must sleep long, long. Oh, jet lag. I'd forgotten. I'm sorry. You are important man, busy man, much to do. Not too busy for you, love. I must not keeping you from your business. It would be bad of me. No, by day I must not be burdened. I will come to you six o'clock night time by taxi cab. Already, I am counting the hours away. Oh, so am I. You are so nice. Good night, Fred. Bye, Eck. I've had some boring evenings in my time, but tonight, top them all. Oh, never mind that. How did you make out? Fine. Getting his money out of him will be a piece of cake. He's well hooked. Hey, you've got a right cracker there, Fred. I have that, I say, I have that. A cracker I intend to pull. If I don't make a mess of it again. Oh, it's straight on, Patrick. I'm going to have some sweet dreams tonight. What on earth are you doing now, Dad? Do you want to have a go on it? No. I've got better things to do in my time. Anyway. I thought you was giving up on fight for fitness. Well, I haven't. I didn't just buy this for me, you know. This is a fitness aid for all the family. I was Josh was all right with this three-wheeler, thanks very much. You're sharp enough to cut yourself this morning, you. Have you got something on your mind? Yes, I have. This friend you've flown in from Thailand. How much is it costing you? That's what I want to know. None of your business. Oh, well, it can't be cheap and all that. And you've been throwing money at us ever since you got here. Give over. I've been entertaining her, that's all. Dining her out. Showing her a few local landmarks. Showing her the inside of your wallet. That's the most interesting thing she's seen, I bet. She's not like that. This woman's from another world. She's half your age, Dad. I mean, I can see why you fancy, but... Haven't you thought to ask yourself why she's bothering with you? That's a very cruel remark. I say it's cruel, is that? Are you saying that I've got nought to offer a self-respecting woman? Are you saying that there's no way that she can have any feelings for me? I'm just asking you to be careful, that's all. Come on now, girls, do yourselves a favour. Fully fashioned stockings, 80p a pair. Charge your old man the pound to let him put them on you and you'll make 20p on the deal. Charge him a fiver to let him take them off and you'll be quids in. How are you, Dennis? If Fred Elliot could see you now... Oh, he probably wouldn't even recognise me. I'd have to give him a bit of the patter. He's thinking you very kind gentlemen. How's it going? Oh, I've got him jumping through hoops, but by heck, it's hard work. If he tells you tale once, he tells you it twice. I say, he tells you it twice. <laughs> well, hard work it may be, but we should get well paid for it. It's all right for you. It's not you who has to sit looking at him, simpering away. The sooner we get what we can off him, the better I'll like it. Fair enough. In that, let's put the bite on him tonight. Look magnificent tonight, my dear. I try for you. My Uncle Gilbert, he travelled the world, you know. He used to say that one of the finest sights he'd ever seen was the Taj Mahal be moonlight. Second only to the great orm at Landudno. Well, the finest, the most beautiful clapped eyes on is you, Orchid. You are saying much wonderful things to me. Since we said goodbye yesterday, my every thought has been with you. Well, all bar in ten this morning when the VAT man were on phone putting wind up me. 
It is like a poetry when you say these things. Sincerely meant. There's no artifice. What you see is what you get, bad bottom. I'm a plain and simple man. This I know. I too, all this day, am thinking of meeting you here and what we shall do this. Well, um, we shall dine out at the clock restaurant, tete a tete. And afterwards, wherever the mood takes us. I've, um, I have a little summit for you. I'm afraid. A token of my esteem. For me? These are diamonds. One precious jewel for another. Is beautiful. Will you fasten on for me, please? On my bosom. Your bosom? Oh, your blouse. Is it hot in here, or is it me? I'm all thumbs. Big, strong thumbs. The King of Wines and the Wine of Kings. I love that one. Vintage. I feel like a king tonight, thanks to you. Oh, no. It is I must thanking you for the happy time you give me. I'll tell you this, Orchid Love. If I weren't a prudent, hard-headed businessman with both feet firmly on the ground, I'd let me heart run away with me head, and I'd have the devil of a job trying to catch up with it. I've only known you for three days, and... and there are things that I want to say to you. If folk knew, they'd call me simple. I would not be one of these person. I have never met a man I... I admire as much as this. And I too, I have feeling. When I am with you, I must struggling to stay calm. Knowing you, being with you, I feel happiness. I do. And I know that our Ashley and He'll come round in time. Ashley? What's he been saying? Oh, he's young. Cynical. He can't understand why you should ever feel... Well, why you should ever want to be my friend. He not seeing you through my eyes. Hey, up! Oh, the Champers is here. As the song says, the night is young and you're so beautiful. I am thinking I do not know this song. Take my word for it. Oh, I've had a wonderful... I don't want it to end. This is my feeling also. Come into your room, Miss. The back room will be empty. Three days, Orchid Love. I said three days. That's how long I've known you. And yet... It feels as if I've known you all my life. Or in some other life before this, I am thinking. My word. That's a thought. But Denny rode up. See, there are things I want to say to you, things I'm bursting to say, and I can't hold them back any longer. Orchid. Damn them, blast! Rover's return, Fred Elliott speaking. This had best not be some beggar selling kitchen at our price. Pardon? Here's somebody for you. For me? They're calling from Bangkok. Sawadika. It's only me, Flower. Right, here we go. Time to give the old sausage stuffer the patter about your dear old dad. Kadarakun. Pomi Saba. Cray the lepo you. Penati concha. Sawati. I 
it is my father. Not bad news, I hope. He is very sick. He can do nothing. There is no one to look after him. Oh, this means I must going home. No one to look after him? It is my duty. I must go to him. Oh. I, I knew the happiness was too good. That happiness for me could not last. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, sorry, France, this morning. You want to be careful you don't overdo it? Well, then, just overdo it, bacon and egg. Does it give you pleasure having a go at me? Only when you're acting daft. I'm acting daft, am I? Well, of course you are. You can't seriously think you've got any future between you and this girl. She's got a name. Ah, oh, well, I thought you had more sense. Some woman you can buy off a shelf on special offer for only fresh from Thailand. I didn't. Oh, well, you pay for an airfare. It's to see you. Why don't you pay for herself? Or you go to Thailand. Won't be surprised if you got an Anna British passport. You know not, do you hear me? Not! Oh, kid is a sweet and wonderful girl. I will not, I say will not, have you cast in aspersions. Ah, oh, well, you know I'm right. Well, where are you going? I must be appetite! You know what it means when you're off your food. What? He's in love. I came over as quick as I could. She's going back to Thailand tomorrow. Really? We were just getting to know each other. At a grand time last night, then she got a phone call saying her dad had been taken poorly. That's a real shame. I know if she goes back, I'll never see her again. I had high hopes for you and Orchid. It seemed like you were made for each other. It's a tragedy, that's what it is. It's a tragedy. I'm not sure we are. Never been to Thailand. Well, you could, but you'd have to get your jabs done sharpish. Jabs? Oh, aye. There's tetanus, typhoid, hepatitis B, then you'll need, of course, some malaria tablets. And if you survive the jabs, you've still got 12 hours on a plane crossing and uncrossing your legs so you don't get a blood clot. I just can't let her go. You know, we had a bit of a scare with Lily's mum a few years back. She had a funny turn and had to go into hospital for a few days. But we sent money over to pay for medical care and a private nurse just to help out. I thought I might have lost her for a while. I could do that. Do what? Send money for medical care, nurses, whatever. Are you sure? Well, what's money for if they have to help folk? And if I can help her and her dad, then happen she won't have to rush over. Well, it's a generous thought. How much do you think it'd cost? Transfer costs can be crippling, so it's best to send one large lump sum. I'm sure five grand would make a difference. Five thousand? Do you know what, Fred? You are a decent and a generous man. Orchid's going to be really grateful. I'll do it. How to keep my flower happy. Is she late? Usually very punctual, the Orientals, I'm led to believe. What are you blethering on about? Just making conversation. He's just trying to make you feel better about the fact that you've been stood up. I've not been stood up. She's not due for another hour yet. Oh. Dutch courage, then, is it? Is it true you paid for her on the internet? I just want to Well, make sure you do. Because if I hear that malicious lie repeated in this bar, I should be looking on the internet for a new barman. True. Now, I don't want to boast, but I'm fairly well off. In fact, to be honest, I have more money than I know what to do with. And so I, I ask myself, what's the use of all that money? If you can't share it, we fault you love. I do not understand. I want to give you some money for your family in Thailand so you can pay for medical expenses. 500 pounds? 5,000. 
This is a huge surprise. Well, it's not altogether an altruistic act. I was just wondering if, if we could make your father feel more comfortable, then happen you might stop on here a little while longer. But I already arranging a return flight. Oh, I'm sure we can fix that. So what do you say? Will you let me help you? Please? You are kind, and I already growing a deep feeling for you. But I must say no. We are not deserving of this. Says who? My father. He is proud man. I'm sure he is, and I know you're very fond of him, but... Why don't you let me help? I'm sure the money will make all the difference. It's true. I'll take it. I'd be so happy if I could help you. I can make you happy. I can't bear the thought of you going. And if this will help your family, and buy me a few more days, will you? Then it's money well spent. Then I accept. Fantastic. And he'll stop a little while longer? I will. My family will be forever grateful. Right, I'm off out. Probably won't be back till late. You're not having any dinner with us? Not today, no. Dad, I know you think I'm against Orchid. I did get that impression, I. Well, I'm not. The trouble is, we don't know her, do we? No. So we're not seeing it the same light as you are. So what I'm saying is, why don't you bring her round here for some dinner, today? We can all get known properly. She's very shy. I don't want her upsetting with a load of questions. Well, nobody's gonna do that. What would I want to upset her for? All right, then. I'll give her a ring, see if she's agreeable. What size joint have you got? I'll get a bigger one from the shop. Come in and welcome. Hello. Hello. Here, come and sit yourself down. Thank you. And you can sit yourself down now because we're doing all the cooking today. Grand. So do you do much cooking, our kid, back at home? I cook, yes, but a different food. You won't know Yorkshire pudding. But you've never even heard of it. Pudding I know, like dessert. No, no, Yorkshire, that's different. Ma, you have a lot to learn. I say you have a lot to learn. So, can I get anybody a drink, Orchid? Uh, no, thank you. She hasn't got any bad habits, not like me. I'll have a drop of scotch. I'll get it. And I'll get back in the kitchen, do the rest of the cooking. Oh, yes, we don't want any burnt offerings. Else Orchid will think we've got some right funny customs. You're right. Everybody is very kind. Well, of course they are. Well, why shouldn't they be with somebody as nice as you? Just a word of warning, though. Have you ever had horseradish sauce? Oh, it's, I don't think so. <laughs> Can take you by surprise, can horseradish sauce. You must be careful. So what did you do back in Thailand? For a job? Yes. A different thing. For a long time, I work in store. Selling what? Hey. Hey, she's not in witness box. I'm only asking. I'm selling a mainly cup and saucer. And what were you paid? Ashley. What business of yours was she got paid? Well, whatever it was, it couldn't have been much to pack it all in and come over here on the off chance of getting married. Who said she did that? Well, hasn't she? I'm sorry. But what are you there for? You don't have to answer that. Might I remind you who the guest is around here? A little common courtesy wouldn't come amiss. And a bit of odd. Ashley! I don't know what's coming to you. Oh, I think you do. So how are you finding this part of the world? A different, of course. <sighs> Must be. Language is hard, but all the time I am learning. I think you speak very well. Yeah, Joyce out better than most around here. I can speak, but not always understanding what people say. That's because they don't speak clearly. They mumble. Don't like mumblers, me. 
And who did you live with back in Thailand? Were it your family or Emily, was... yes. And so do I. You know, we both live with those families, and very nice it is too, but there comes a time when you'd like something a bit different in your life. Is that enough of an answer for you? You've gone too far and we're not having any more of it. All I said was how you know she was going to support saying. herself while she was expecting you to. Yes, well, it's only your business. You keep your nose out of what doesn't concern you. Don't go upsetting yourself. He's no right to ask such stuff. I would like to leave. I don't blame you. Can I get taxi? Round corner. I'll come with you. It's a sad day. When we have a guest comes halfway round the world to this house and you come out with such a barrage of questions and innuendos that you've driven her out near to tears. A sad day. Come on, love. I'm so sorry about that. Go on. You want to tell me I shouldn't have said out? No. I think what you did say might have been phrased a bit more diplomatically. All right, well, maybe you did get a bit carried away. She answer me. She's been here over three hours and still not said out. Maybe she's frightened of making a bad impression. I just don't want my dad making a fool of himself again. I know. And I think your dad knows it as well, which is why he's so keen to defend her. Cos deep down he's worried that's exactly what he might be doing. In all my long history of Sunday dinners, this was one at worst. I say one at worst. You could have cut the atmosphere with a cake slice. Howard Ashley, my old flesh and blood, go dinner. Like she was some kind of enemy or had done something wrong. I always say our kids are there to test us. Sure, it's not the other way around. And now, all kids disappeared without so much as a buy your leave. Betty? Yes, lovely. Have you got any advice? Betty used to go to the Chinese bloke. Really? John Joe Rooney. Quarter Cantonese on his mother's side. Apparently, he was a direct descendant from the bloke who invented the walk, wasn't he, Betty? Well, according to his auntie Weiwei... I've not had many doings with this orchid. How good's her English? Mm, she's got a smattering. <laughs> I suppose all Fred's interested in is that she speaks the language of love. <laughs> John Joe Rooney, very fluent in that. <laughs> well, come on then, Fred, is she bilingual? Does she speak Lancashire and love? <laughs> How much do you actually know about this orchid? I know enough! I know that she doesn't laugh at me like this bunch of clacking charlatans. I'm sick of everyone round here treating me like I'm some blown-up buffoon. And no matter what you crowd or our Ashley thinks, you're jealous. Cos you've got just blood in your veins when I've, I've got poetry, romance, fire. Stick another one in there and make it a large one. It was a large one last time. Not large enough. Have you seen out of orchid this afternoon, Patrick? Has she asked you for a lift anywhere? No. Why? Is something wrong? When she's in your cab, does she talk about me? Does she say how nice? Oh, yeah, she's really gabby. Dead interested in all your businesses. Ah. <laughs> Fred. Dennis! I come on an errand of a rather personal nature. What have you done to Orchid? She's Dennis. been on the phone to Lily, yabbering away. Dennis. Tie and tears, not a good combination. Dennis, there's been a right rum do. Well, up to this morning, I thought I'd be going down on bended knee. Oh, you want to watch that at your age, Fred? You might click your hip. <laughs> I can't tell feeling how Ashley's gone and blown it for me. Fred, Fred, calm yourself. All is not lost. You know what I'd do if I were you? What? With Orchid by buying her a nice gift. Chocolates, flowers. Or maybe some more jewellery. You want to impress her. What's that thing you've got round your neck, Shelley? If she had her way to be Justin Timberlake. Uh, Mum, it's a choker. Quietens down a noisy cleavage. Pricey, were it? Oh, it's amazing what you can get out of the catalogues these days. I'd say you need to get her some very top end. I mean, your business is a booming, aren't they? You're not short of a bob or two. <laughs> anyway, thanks for the pop. I'd best make tracks. Lily's deep frying a squid and have to pick up some chilli jam. Oh. Well, thanks for the advice, Dennis. I shall act upon that. You make sure you do, Fred. Evening all. See ya.
Right, Stace. I'd be better if I shifted these pop socks. Actually, no, I'm not all right. I've got someone give me a right going over this afternoon. I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. The senior beloved, as a matter of fact, and guess what? I reckon he's going to buy you a pearl choker. Really? I tell you what I've always wanted. One of them Russian wedding rings in three types of gold. Drop the hint, darling. This could run and run. Is it really that thick? I prefer gullible to thick. Hey, do you think you could stretch to one of them tiaras? I've always fancied one of them. We'll get you the crown jewels if you drop a big enough hint. Ah, it looked like her stall to me. Are you sure? Well, she knew her way around it well enough, and she was no stranger to the market either. And considering she was meant to be living in Thailand just a week ago, she's picked up a Mancunian accent in next to no time. So then, Ashley, I believe you've got something to say, haven't you? I'm glad you came back. I wanted to apologise. If I said anything to make you feel awkward, then I'm sorry. Any friend of my daddy's always welcome in this house. So there you are, see. Our house is your house. So, shall we be friends? Good. Now then, you two, make yourselves scarce. Why? Because Orchid and I would like a little bit of privacy, a bit of quality time alone together. You don't mind, do you, Claire? No. Do you love Dad? Your dad. You know, there is something about that woman. Oh, just leave him to it. Let's just enjoy a quiet drink while we can, eh? I'll get these, Betty. <laughs> oh, no, you're all right, Sally. Actually, I'm the bearer of bad tidings, so it's the least I can do. A uh, pint, please, right. Betty. And, um A dry out wine, please. OK. Yeah. What bad tidings are these, then? Well, it's about Fred, or more specifically, his young lady. Ah, oh, well, I don't want to talk about it. I've already had with him over it today. Well, the thing is, I think she's taking him for a ride. What makes you say that? Fred thinks Orchid's an exotic young lovely just off the plane from Thailand, whereas, in actual fact... She sells socks on Levenzu Market. You don't think there's any danger of him getting carried away and doing something he might regret, do you? Have you lost a something? I've lost my heart. I've lost my heart to a vision of oriental pulchritude. Now, it's, it's not often a man can use a word like pulchritude in these parts, but you've changed all that. You know, ordinary words like pretty, beautiful, gorgeous, they just don't cut the mustard. If I ever spend another day without you, I'd break my heart. So will you please? Do me the great honour of agreeing to be my wife. Yes, OK. That's my taxi. I have to go. What now? Uh, my father's cousin niece. She expects me. Yes, but, but surely we can celebrate as an engagement and we have a bottle of bubbly. I mean, she'll understand. Why don't we make a night of it? Not before wedding, Fred. I have my honour to think of. No, I didn't mean that. And duty to my father's cousin niece. I know you're in there. You do actually want to get married? Of course. I've had enough of this. You don't seem exactly overjoyed. Inside, I'm very, very happy. Uh, but in my country, it's custom to hide emotion. Come out, or I'll tell the whole street what you are. We could learn a lot from you people. And I a lot to learn from you, Fred. Thank you, out. you lovely man. You hear me? You can't come out and face me like a real man, can you? Because you're not a real man. But what choice have we got? We can't just watch him skin him alive. He's going to feel like a right idiot, just like he did with Penny King. Now, well, I'll be gentle with him. I think he'll land on with Dad by now. When birds do sing, hey, ding a ding ding. Sweet lovers love the spring. Never was a truer word warbled. You are looking at the luckiest man in Christendom. Well, we better get off. Josh is going to be late for nursery. We, we sweat, Claire. I have glad tidings to impart, and I want these three to be the first to hear. Not again. 
Don't be cynical, Ashley. The chime's rotten in one of tender years. Come on, then tell us. Get it over with. Last night, I asked my lovely orchid if she would do me the precious honour of becoming my lady wife. A big surprise, shock on her, she said yes. As a matter of fact, she did. Well, you daft old beggar! That's no way to speak to your father! She's a comment! You are maligning your future stepmother. She'll have a greedy miss until by end of the week. No! You don't know her. She's the loveliest woman alive. No. You're offensive, Ashley. Mightily offensive. Ah, well, you're going soft in the head. Why does he do this? It's a good job you know how to handle him, isn't it? But what else could I do? I think a sincere apology is called for. I had no right to say what I did. We're both really sorry. You said no. You were big gob here casting aspersions. I haven't given Orchid the proper chance. None of us have. So can we start over, pretend none of this ever happened, and get to know her properly? If you're willing to banish suspicion from your bosom and give that beautiful and pure lass a fighting chance, then I'll forget all about it. Thanks, Dad. And I'll give it benefit from doubt now on. Good. Actually, I've already started. I spoke to her, she shop. Who are I? Ah, she was very polite, very pleasant. She wants to meet you. Really? When? She wants to make wedding arrangements. Yeah, she, she finds some fabric for the bridesmaids' dresses. Really? That's wonderful. Ah, well, I'll drive you if you like. I mean, shop's not that busy. I'd like that very much. Eh. Now, wait. Wait till you spend a bit of time with my little Eastern princess. Mm? You might find yourself falling in love with her as well. Better watch him, Clara. I'd say we'll have to watch him. Oh. Come on, then. Oops. It's the only way. Where did she say exactly? It's a fabric store. We're down there somewhere. You've got an all in them sites big enough for Bernard Manning to climb in, and you can't let that happen. Treat yourselves to a new pair. Reinforced gussets, cheap as chips. Are you ready for a prize, Stacey? Meat and tater? Is there any of it? Oh, champion. <laughs> Don't be tired, buy some tight, something for the weekend. Dad. Dad, it had to be this way. You just wouldn't listen. Dad! Dad! Come on, ladies, let's see your purse is opening. Just feel that quality. That is. You're my up from here! They're villains, these two. Cox is a pair of them! Alfred, don't get excited. We can explain. Can't we, Orchid? Yeah. Don't come with that orchid rubbish. Come on then, Stacy! Let's hear this explanation. I'm all ears. Cracky and how are you and my friend? Setting me up with all that muck about your precious Lily. I bet you're not even married to her. I am. You've got hold of the wrong end of the stick. I know what end of the stick I've got hold of. The end I always get. You knew that. You knew I was vulnerable. Vulnerable? You? You've never been near Thailand, have you? No. You come from round here? I don't suppose your dad's ever had a day of illness in his life. I don't suppose you know who your dad is? It wasn't supposed to be like this. How was it supposed to be? All buttercups and butterflies and melting into the sunset together? You strip me like a load of locusts and then evaporated into the night. You've done this before. You have! I'm calling the police. Don't do that, Fred. Think of the publicity. Think of your standing in the community. You won't come that. I don't want blackmail on top of it all. Ashley, get a new mobile. Are you sure? Damn it, I want these two dead legs incarcerated. Please, Fred, we're sorry. Don't call the police. I hated doing that to you. You really are a very nice man. I like you. Dad. 
You think I'm that much of a putty brain? Don't call the police. I like you. That easy. I must be the softest touch you've ever had. If you'd have been honest. Sincere. You'd have wanted for an out. But you're not but a common tart. And you? You're just a filthy pimp. I don't want to see I no air of either of you ever again. We got away with it then. <laughs> Get stuffed, Dennis. Oh, Godless. Oh, fool. A garmless. Party. Oh, fuck. <laughs>